Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Syncretism Society Virtual Academy. Today, we're going to be talking about the mysteries of Moses and the esoteric um, astrological meaning behind him. As we can see, Moses represents Mars because this in the age of Mars, an age of Aries, um, is what Moses represents in the microcosm. In the same way, Jesus represents Jupiter because Jupiter rules Pisces. Now, they're both the sun, but they take on the characteristics or the cloak or the clothes of the corresponding planet that they inhibit during the cycle. For example, Moses is the sun with the attributes of Mars and Aries. So we're going to be talking about Moses and what he represents alchemically um, within ourselves. I like to draw some correspondences. Um, notice uh, Moses meaning drawn from water. And Jesus or noon mean fish. So fish and these, they're both in, in drawn from water or put into water. Um, Moses is put into the canal, the water canal, which represents the spinal co column. He is uh, put inside clothes that protect him from the water in the same way Jesus is wrapped in the clothing to protect him when he's born in the manger. So they're born in different places, but they have similar stories in the same way uh, Moses learns how to turn the water of Egypt into blood. And it's a miracle. And the same way Jesus turns water into wine. So these are alchemical truths within ourselves. Um, so what I like to do. Let's see here. If I share my screen, it'll let me do it. So I'm just going to briefly um, use this as some notes because um, I, I put a lot of information together on Moses. And um, we're going to be reading from the book, George W. Carey, uh, The Tree of Life, as well as God, Man, Word, Made Flesh, as well as some of my writing. So as we know, Moses means drawn from water. So our inner Moses is drawn from the waters of the cerebral spinal system. Um, and in the above, it's Moses is drawn from the waters of the celestial waters, the realm, and put into safety here in the womb where it grows and conquers over the trials of life. So it's both physical and celestial happenings that Moses or inner Christ spirit is the symbolic nature of the willpower of the spirit nature. And it's born within us. So Moses is drawn from the waters of the cerebral spinal fluid in the same way he's drawn from the waters when his foster mom picks him up from the waters, her, his mom, left him in waters because the king said to kill all the firstborns just in the same way in the jesus story king herod said to kill the firstborns because the animal nature and the animal passions rush in to eliminate the seed as soon as it's born the seed is put into the waters of the spinal canal and go down to egypt which is the genital region so moses represents the sun in aries Mars rules Aries, so Moses takes on that personality of the planet Mars, but he is the sun in the age of Aries. Um, inside of us, metaphysically, Moses is our inner being that helps liberate our soul from bondage of desire. The Pharaoh represents the inner materialistic desires and attractions to material lust and sensations. So essentially, when we're talking about King Herod or the Egyptian Pharaoh, it's talking about the ego that dominates our persona, the animal nature, all the desires of the flesh. This is considered Egypt, which is below the kidneys, below the scale, or below the law. Anything above the law is above Libra, which rules the kidneys. So the Pharaoh represents our inner materialistic desires and attractions to material lusts and sensations. Moses is placed in a cradle from the top of the brain and down the river into Egypt. Egypt represents the lower part of man's nature below the scales of Libra, which rule the kidneys. This is the three chakras. So these rule the three lower chakras that are pride, instinctual reactions, and only want to gain. It has no real desire to help others. It's our selfish nature. Moses represents the power within us, our innermost, that liberates us from these desires when we retain chastity and alchemical transmutation of the lower energies. 
So the three chakras that are instinctual and drive security, procreation, and eating and surviving. When we're trapped in the lower chakras, we are the slaves of Egypt. So Moses is the liberator of the slaves of Egypt. Moses, um, he's born, he's an Israelite, but because the king is directing the Israelite slaves to kill the firstborn, his mom puts him in the Nile River goes down to Egypt and is born, taken by a foster mom, which is the queen of Egypt. And he is, uh, grows up in the Pharaoh lineage, learning all the mysteries of the occult knowledge, esoteric mysteries. And then he later on is met by God to tell him that he is able to liberate his, the Israelites from the bondage of Egypt, because the seed or the chrism is the entity that travels throughout the body goes down to Egypt and back into the higher brain and liberates the trapped archetypes that fall into Malkuth. Because we know that these, that Kether, the top of the head, produces the archetypes and they come down. They come down to the bottom of the spine and are either trapped or enslaved to the animal passions. So when we're trapped in the lower chakras, we're the slaves of Egypt under the rule of the Pharaoh or the desires of the flesh. We liberate energy when we gain conscious control over the lower impulses and start living in alignment with the laws of the inner being. The inner being is the I am. He climbs Mount Sinai and is spoken to by the I am or the burning bush. When we raise our energy up to the brain through the righteous living, the light appears as a burning bush. Now our brain resembles a bush from the side. It looks like a tree. And when the fire of Mars from the sexual groin of Egypt gets liberated, we start getting our intuition activated and the burning bush speaks to us and tells us right from wrong and what we need to do to um, utilize the willpower of Moses and Mars to conquer our lower nature. So we liberate energy, we gain conscious control over the lower impulses and start living in alignment with the laws of the inner being. Inner being is the I am. He climbs Mount Sinai and is spoken to by the I am or the burning bush. When we rise our energy up to the brain through righteous living, the light appears as a burning bush. The burning bush is the brain illuminated. The higher mind is Moses, who is willpower, who receives the divine commandments from the inner being after liberation from Egypt. So we liberate our archetypes and we go up to Mount Sinai where we're taught face, see God face to face. Same story of Jacob's ladder goes to the top of the head and sees Piniel. Piniel. This is the promised land flowing with milk and honey, the place where the exodus takes place. Exodus takes place from the lower chakras to the highest chakra. We're liberated. The Ten Commandments are related to the laws of our inner being and our initiations. The Ten Commandments are inside of the chest or the heart. They're written in us. And when we become illuminated, we become aware of this. I'm going to take a look at what George W. Carey, in the, in, the, in the book, The Tree of Life, Physical Regeneracy. So, the word Jesus is from ictus, Greek, for fish. The word Christ means a substance of oil, consistency, and ointment or smear. Varnish or paints are used to pres preserve or save wood or paper or cloth. Hence, they become saviors. Notice the, the beautiful analogy there of the salve of wood saves the wood, the oil or ointment that saves us. It crystallizes our individuality so we can maintain it permanently. At the age of about 12, Jesus was found in the temple arguing with the doctors or teachers. The word doctor is from Latin, docrer, to teach. Now read carefully. Every month in the life of every man or woman, when the moon is in the sun, in the sun, that was in the birth of the individual. There's a psychophysical seed or son of man born near the solar plexus or the pneumogastric plexus, which in the ancient text was called the house of bread. Bethlehem is from Beth, a house, and Helm, bread. Cast thy bread upon the waters, and it shall return to thee after many days. Waters are the blood and nerve fluids of the body, which carry the fish on its divine journey to regenerate, save, and redeem man. Nazareth means to cook. Nazarene means cooked. Cooked means to prepare. Now, this is very important. Cooked means to prepare. Any materialized thing is bread. 
Nazareth Mass, Meso, or Doe, thus the Catholic Mass, also Mason, it will now be made plain why Mason and Catholics are not in agreement, for our letter N is an abbreviation of the 14th letter of the Hebrew alphabet, Nun, which is a fish. By adding N to Meso, which is bread, the riddle of cooked or prepared fish was made so plain that the priesthood strenuously objected and thus developed friction between the Church of Masonry. So the mysteries of cooked fish. Our fish is our sexual fluids, and when we retain them, we heat up the internal alchemical laboratory, which cooks and prepares the fish to rise up to the spine and to regenerate the human body. That's why the disciples were fishermen. The early Christians used fish as their secret symbol. God prepared a fish to swallow Jonah. Jonah means dove. Dove means peace, the germ descending from the gray matter of the brain. The storm means sex desire. The life seed was thus saved. He that is born of God cannot sin or fall short of knowledge, for his seed remaineth in him. So we must keep the fish within us and not let it out the fish gate. The Pharaoh represents sex desire, always tries to destroy the firstborn. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem, he went at age 12 up to the pneumogastric nerve, which crosses the medulla oblongata at its junction with the spinal cord at the head of the river of Jordan the marrow or nerve fluid of the spinal cord. This temple where the moral seed argued with the purity animal cells. So when Jesus is in the temple arguing and explaining the truth, it's actually going on in our brain when the Christic atoms are fighting the animal impulses and arguing in the temple. It, it actually argues with the animal cells to change their rate of vibration to moral and spiritual concept. This is very deep. This is the astrochemical version. Remember, the Bible is laid with seven versions, anagogical, historical, literal, alchemical, uh, and literary. So Jesus drove those who bought and sold, even you and I, with the whip of thongs out of the temple. We must all give up the animal life or suffer the same fate. Before we explain the baptism in Jordan and the christening and the crucifixion, let us briefly explain Moses, Joshua, Nile, Pharaoh, and the children of Israel. Egypt means the dark lower part of the body. The part of the body below the solar plexus is Egypt or the kingdom of earth. So we know Malkuth on the tree of life is the bottom of the spine. Egypt means dark or lower part of the body. All above the center constitute the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is within you. The manger of Bethlehem is the center of balance, which is the solar plexus. So the manger is in the solar plexus, and anything above the solar plexus is heaven, and everything below is hell or earth or the tomb. So Nile, Moses, and Pharaoh's daughter all refer to generation. See the overflow of the Nile. It rises in the mountains of the moon. Moses means drawn from the water. Fish are drawn from water. There are two fishes in our sea. See the sign of Pisces, two fish. Joshua, the son of Nun. Nun is Hebrew for fish. Moses was physical or generative fish. Moses' laws were on the physical plane. Joshua's laws were spiritual. Joshua means God of salvation, and salvation comes from saliva or salvation. So each seed is named differently. First seed is Moses. Second seed is Joshua. Then we have our third most powerful seed, which is Jesus. Each one magnifying multiple times of pure purity love compassion and physical biochemical regeneration of the body that's why jesus says he's whose seed remaineth in him sinneth not so we can see saliva is smear ointment and so joshua compares with christ as moses compares with jesus moses died on mount nebo nebo means understanding joshua took the place left vacant by the death of moses Jesus was baptized of John in Jordan, the fluids or the Christ substance of the spinal cord, and became my beloved son in whom I am well and pleased. There is no J in the Greek or Hebrew alphabets, therefore the word John is eon, meaning soul or fluids of the body. In the same way, Christus, Christos means fluid, same as John or eon. So when the body dies, the fluids die, thus man loses his soul when he loses his body. To prevent the loss of the soul and flesh is the mission of the son or seed of God or the son of man. There are two very small nerves that extend from the solar plexus. So essentially what it's talking about is 
we have to use our inner willpower of Moses to liberate us from our lower animal nature of Pharaoh, rise it up to the brain and crystallize the waters so they don't disperse at the time of death. Moses, the inner Moses, our spiritual willpower, is the only thing that can free the Israelites from bondage. An Israelite is one inwardly who has decided to transmute the lower nature into purity and righteousness. Our inner Israelites are the energy that is bound to the lower chakras by the pharaohs of Egypt. The pharaohs represent our lower ego, which causes psychological disturbances that make us reactive or impulsive. While we are in bondage, we have feelings of lust, fear, shame, pride. We hunger for material goods. We hunger for approval. We want sense pleasure and we slave away in Egypt every day, fulfilling the wants of a bottomless pit or an unsatisfied Pharaoh, which is our inner desires. True fulfillment comes from the spirit and living in alignment. Sensual instant gratification without moderation or reason can only be fleeting and the thirst cannot be quenched. Moses, our inner spiritual power, can help us rise from these lower centers as we make our journey to the promised land. This represents our Christic energy as it is able to rise from the lower chakras and reach the land flowing with milk and honey, DMT, tryptamine, the ability to talk and prophesy and speak with God only after we overcome our lower animal nature instincts that were, were made for us to overcome, were made for us to learn from. Moses represents willpower. If we have weak will, then we're always going to be dominated by our sensual passions and, and gratifications. We'll never take the time to actually stop the snake and allow the energy to rise. How do we do this? Well, we have to wander through our personal wilderness. Moses takes the, the Israelites into the wilderness for 40 years. We have the same 40 days that Jesus went into the wilderness tempted by the devil. This 40 years represents the alchemical nature, the initiations of the journey, the overcoming of the animal nature. And remember, um, Moses represents Mars willpower or transcending from the earth to the water level of consciousness. When he crosses the Red Sea, we cross from the left hemisphere to the right hemisphere and open up that gate within us that we're talking about with the eternal smile, the Mona Lisa smile, which opens that gate for the energy to flow. Then the Pharaoh and all the animal passions are disintegrated. So we have to wander through our personal wilderness through fasting, prayer, meditation. Worshiping God, bhakti yoga, karma yoga, jhani yoga. We can go into those at a later time. It's knowledge um, through, you can either like love God through bhakti. You can have self-inquiry, jhani yoga, or karma yoga, doing physical acts of charity. So we have to become aware of, you know, not overeating, <clears throat> refraining from drugs and stimulants, alcohol, which ruins the seed. We have to find our inner peace. Solomon means peace. So find our inner Solomon, finding peace within rather than without. Reserving the sexual energy for a person we love the most and to transmute it uh, through the mysteries of Tantra. This is why Moses has the staff. His first miracle is to show the Pharaoh that he, his staff, he could turn it into a snake. The snake represents the Kundalini. It isn't said that we must raise our serpent on our staff like Moses did in the wilderness because it's talking about the rising of this energy. This allows us to move from earth consciousness, which is reactive, robotic, um, to the level of water, which is silence and peace. The parting of the Red Sea of the lower uncontrolled emotions allows us to enter the right hemisphere of the brain. Moses' staff has the serpents entwined, showing a masterful control of the energy in our bodies. So when we activate our inner Moses or willpower, we will also be able to entwine the serpents on the staff. We need willpower. Moses is willpower. The ram Aries, the cerebram or the higher mind, which is anatomy is shaped like a lamb with fleece and wool. Hence the golden fleece. Moses in the age of Mars, a ram telling us to stop worshiping the bull Taurus because we're moving from the age of Taurus to Aries in an astrological level, but on a lower level, it's because Moses wants us to stop and overcome our materialistic lusts and desires for sense gratification and watch the negative qualities of Taurus. 
material imbalance without spirit is what we're trying to overcome. So as we co cooperate with the inner Moses, we become free from the bondage of the lower nature. The inner oil then ascends being led by Moses into the brain. The right hemisphere is accessed and we experience spiritual communion, peace, increase of clarity and willpower and love as well as unity reside here. It is the land flowing of milk and honey. Our glands produce DMT and serotonin. The brain is made of lactose and sucrose, AKA milk and honey. The inner, inner chemistry is now balanced and refined and we can be happy and healthy and physically and spiritually strong. As we can see, we are incorp incorporating biochemistry, astrology, psychology, as well as mythology. And if you want to take it historically, it is also, you could see it as Kabbalistically manifesting as above, so below. It's because they are all one in nature. Just like the dolls, the Russian dolls can fit smaller sizes into the larger sizes. The book of life is within us. The book of life is in the spinal column and our, our book is the rib cage. We open up the book and understand the laws of God written in our chest. It's very allegorical. But like they said, allegory and transcendental analogical truths are more truth and fact and history because it's happening within us here and now. So it's of utmost importance to understand that it only works with the objective truth of nature as we align our values and integrities to that which is. George W. Carey in God, Man, Word, Made Flesh talks about the lake of hellfire and brimstone. The lower portion of the torso bowels is called hell, a graver lake. Many times in the scriptures, sulfur is a product of brimstone. They're more or less sulfur in all foodstuffs. Overeating results in an oversupply of sulfur. Overeating causes acidity. A portion of the food failing to digest ferments and acid results. The acid uniting with sulfur causes heat, fire, fever, hence hell, fire and brimstone are chemical statements. The vital force or fluids of the body is the soul that is injured devitalized, destroyed in the poisons of the instinct, intestinal tract called Egypt. Thus can a man lose his soul in hellfire and brimstone here and now. But as by man came death into the world, so by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Let the wicked man forsake his ways and return unto the Lord who will abundantly pardon and thus save his soul. All whose bodily die lose their soul. For says Job, as the soul of a beast goeth downward at death, so doeth the soul of man. Certainly for the wage of sin, ignorance is death. But the soul is not the spiritual ego, and man is body, soul, and spirit. When the spirit in man receives the wisdom of the Almighty and understands it, is able to lift up and transmute the soul fluids and disintegrate both fluids and flesh, as the ascension of the seed, Jesus or Moses, are made to show in the fables and parables. All that I do, ye may do. So this is a treatise on physical regeneration using Moses as the allegorical character. I uh, hope that you guys enjoyed this and we will be going into deeper lessons in the next coming lessons. Thank you so much. Bye.